Today I'm going to show you how to make the Rocketeer helmet. For this build, I used EVA foam, EVA foam dowels, bevel foam, what the foam, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, contact cement, black paint, gold rub and buff, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I started off by taking the strips off of a floor tile and cutting off the puzzle pieces. Then I traced this pattern onto the foam. There's a link to this pattern down below. Contrary to popular belief, this is not the same pattern that I used for all my Star Wars helmets. Rocketeer is a bit different. I'm tracing it with a white paint pen, making sure to get all the registration marks so that I can line up the pieces later. I'm also marking front, back, left, and right just so that I don't accidentally flip these around. When the main helmet pieces were finished being traced, I cut them out. Starting with scissors, just to make this piece as small as possible, just for convenience. But for the edges that have to connect to each other, I'm using a razor pen to cut down on the sanding. Although I do have to consistently sharpen it. Otherwise I will have to sand. Speaking of, when all the pieces were cut out, I did have to refine it a bit on my belt sand. Doing this outside just because it's going to kick up a lot of dust. I'd rather not have that in the house. This, by the way, is where you want to wear the mask. You can't always tell because I'm typically out of frame. Also did the side pieces. When all of the edges were sanded, I brought the pieces back inside and heat formed them. You should do both sides, but I do a little bit more heat forming on the back because no one's going to see that. So if I go too long and it burns a little bit, it's, it's no big deal. You know, out of sight, out of mind. When each piece was hot enough, I formed them to be curved. First I did this with my hands, and then I placed the pieces in a bowl to cool. This is called dishing. They'll cool pretty fast. I usually let them cool longer than they probably need to just to be on the safe side. When each piece was cooled, I brought them back outside to glue them together. I'm gonna use contact cement for this. Being glue, the lid's probably gonna get stuck after repeated uses, so it's helpful to keep a can opener nearby or bottle opener, whatever. I evenly spread the glue along all the seams that would need to contact each other, hence contact cement. This will take about three minutes. As soon as you expose the glue to oxygen, it will start to set up. You have like a three minute working time and then you gotta let it sit for 12 to 15 minutes depending on how fresh the can is until it dries and becomes tacky. And then you'll have another three minutes to connect the seams before it dries too much. Again, all this is depending on how old the glue is because if you use half of it and then let the can sit on a shelf for a year, then the air that's trapped in there will cause it to set up a little bit and shorten those working times. It's not a huge Huge problem, but it always seems to cost me like the last quarter inch of glue in the can. So when the glue is tacky, I press the seams together until they help. You'll notice I didn't do all the seams at once, I did this in stages, mostly because it takes longer than three minutes to apply glue across all of the seams, but also because some of these panels will want to pull themselves apart if the glue isn't totally set on those under stress seams beforehand. Hmm, looks like a fender. When all the pieces were together, I had a basic blank helmet. I cut the brim to have a little bit of a slant to it to match the Rocketeer. Then I carefully figured out the shape of the fin. For that, I'm using What the Foam, which is a very dense foam product. It's not really necessary, but it's blank on both sides, which is going to save me a lot of sanding. Another prop maker sent me a whole bunch of this. When I had a rough idea of how the fin was supposed to look, I cut it out. I made sure it would fit on the helmet. Not going to lie, this did take a couple of tries, but when it finally fit, and then transferred it to the template for later. Then I figured out where the eye and mouth holes were going to go. After that, I carefully cut out the eye and mouth holes with a very sharp blade because it's going to be very difficult to clean up any jagged cuts just because of how narrow those vents are. It's able to be a little bit less precise for the eyes, but still try to stay within the lines. After that, I cleaned it up with my rotary tool, which by the way, you could use on the helmet seams instead of a belt sander. It just takes longer. Once those edges were refined, I figured out the placement of the fin, marked it with the paint pen, and then super glued it. You could use contact cement for this, but it's not a seam that really has to flex, so I can get away with using super glue. In fact, you get away with using super glue on the entire helmet, it's just, it might be prone to breaking over time. The whole point of building out a foam is that it looks solid, but it's a little bit plush. So all your hours of hard work won't be for naught if it falls off a table or gets crushed in luggage, as is likely to happen if you travel for conventions. Once the fin was attached, I turned it over to work on the brim. Then I took one of the puzzle piece strips from before, cut the pieces off of that, and then glued it to the brim of the helmet. Now that all the main pieces are attached, I can work on the details. They're these swoopy lines that a lot of people use square pieces for, but that uh, doesn't look right to me. It may be, but it just reads as weird to me. So I'm going to use half cylinder bevels. I think these are from TNT Cosplay Supply. Yeah. I cut them down to size and then super glued them on. I did this very slowly and carefully because if you mess up with super glue, it's kind of a pain to fix. You 
basically end up being forced to sand and refill in order to erase your mistake. It was time consuming, but I eventually got them all on there. Then for the air scoops, I took a foam dowel and sliced off a slanted piece. Then I carefully used my rotary tool with the wide drum shaped sanding bit to sand a trench in the back of it underneath it. You don't have to go the entire length because of the curvature of the helmet you can't really see that far down, but you do want the outer edge to be as well sanded as possible. See a lot of people fall into the trap of trying to make the vents out of a flat piece of foam. Not blaming them, I nearly did. But it just doesn't look right and these pieces are preformed, so why not go for it? Why not take advantage of that? I mean they should be two millimeter, so you would assume just use two millimeter foam, but it's just way more work than you need to do. Then I carefully glued that on there. It helps if you trace where you want it to go before you glue it. I think I just traced the ends, but luckily that worked out. Got a break there. I repeated the step on the other side. Next, for the rivets that border the eyes, I'm using these foam dots, which are actually punch outs from Ben Eadie's foam chainmail, which I absolutely recommend. But if you do have to make them from scratch, you can easily do so with a small metal tube or a pen casing. Then I glued them on. I nearly forgot the detail along the edge of the fin where it connects to the helmet. In the movie, it has this pattern that looks like it's supposed to be an early weld. And that may very well be accurate, but it reads as a little bit messy to me. So I'm gonna take another foam bevel from before and slice it in half lengthwise, essentially creating a quarter foam cylinder. I super glued that along the edge of either side of the fin. Now that all the details are done, I filled in some of the more visible seams with Alex Fast Dry. It's a flexible putty. When it had dried, I sanded it with a sanding sponge because it's a little less aggressive than my belt sander. Gave it a quick heat pass, not so much to seal it up to get it ready for painting as to blow away all the little dust bits. Then I painted the whole thing black with gloss black acrylic house paint. I'm gonna need to do three layers of this at least because the first layer always gets absorbed by the paint. You can tell because those areas won't be shiny. In fact, I think I did three and a half layers on this because I missed a few areas the first time around. Basically when the whole thing is evenly shiny, that's when you're good to do a top coat. You can also use Plasti Dip, but I think you get more coverage for your money using house paint. Try not to overload your brush, otherwise drips could develop and then harden into the final paint job. And then you'll have to sand and repaint. Let's check in with InCam Jake for more on that. All right, this is one coat and you can see it's not really glossy. So I'm gonna have to do at least one, probably two more. Also, in evening everything out so it's the same color, you can see where some seams need a little bit more putty. After it was dry and I had even coverage, I used gold rub and buff for the top coat. It's a wax metallic finish. Some prop makers hate it because it gives a little bit of an uneven coat, but that's kind of the look I'm going for here. You know, it's, it's got that uh, steampunk vibe. Also a well-worn vibe. He's flying through the air, chasing after airplanes and zeppelins. He's, he's gonna get some soot on there, some dirt buildup in the seams. Also, it can reactivate if it's heated up. So I've heard. I've never had that happen. In fact, I made these Mass Effect gloves years ago and I still have them and I just threw them through the wash because you know they were disgusting and the finish didn't come off so I think if you just let it dry long enough then you're good to go after I had complete coverage and let it sit to dry for really not that long at all the time it took for a lunch break nice I worked on some of the interior pieces such as the screen over the inside of the vents which I'm gonna use a piece of screen door mesh for I hot glued it in place which might be enough but I put some foam over it just so that the exposed metal doesn't poke the wearer's face now for the eye I was thinking of using part of a tinted face mask, but I thought that might look too inset. So instead, for the lenses, I used an old pair of aviator sunglasses. I removed them from the frame and then I cleaned them because they've been in my glove compartment for a decade. I made a small incision on the inside of the eye hole of the helmet for it to rest in and then slid the lens in place. I repeated that step on the other side. And that was it. That's how I made my Rocketeer helmet. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this build, let me know in comments below, as well as what other helmets you'd like to see me build. If you want to try this out for yourself, there's a template link in the description down below. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and hit the bell icon because the subscription button isn't quite what it used to be. And if you'd like to support the channel, then you can head on over to the Patreon page where patrons can view my videos ad-free and early, as well as have a greater say in which props I build. It can take a while to put together a build video. So in the meantime, you can check out any one of my previous builds right here. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later. Okay, so in the interest of full disclosure and honesty, I realized after the fact that I actually used a template for a cosplayer that I built for who's not insignificantly shorter than me. And as a result, doesn't fit. So if you're working from the template and you're, I don't know, 5'9 or taller, 
then you can get around that problem either by cutting outside the trace lines of your template, which will make the whole thing just a little bit bigger, or before you attach the brim, go all the way around with another foam strip and move the entire face one inch down, and then you'll be good. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Hit the bell icon. Uh, let me know what you want to see me make next in comments down below. Happy crafting. See you later. Now, where do you go?